Hello, YouTube friends. Welcome. I am going live with you all first. I'm going to turn on Instagram in just a second, but I wanted to take a second to just say hello to you all first because I feel like I end up looking at my phone the entire time. So I want to give you guys a little FaceTime first. Please let me know where you're tuning in from. It is a brisk day in Atlanta, Georgia. Right now it is like 40 degrees, I want to say, and I'm getting over a little cold. So this will be interesting, <laughs> but we're going to have a great time. We're going to get warm and it's going to be a quick like 20, 25 minute workout. So it's going to be perfect. I'm going to go ahead and turn on the stream on Instagram and then we'll get started. One second. Welcome, Kettlebell Kings family. My name is Madeline Conti, tuning in from Atlanta, Georgia, where it is so cold today. So we are going to take our sweet time getting warmed up and making sure that we're ready to rock and roll before we throw around some heavy weight. I want you guys to tell me where you're tuning in from. Again, I said I'm in Atlanta, Georgia. I teach a kettlebell class and run a program called Kettle Club. It is really centered around flows, but at the core of it all, I am teaching single kettlebell skills and complexes to build into a flow every week. And that's really what we're going to be focusing on today is the purpose of complexes and why they're so important for building strength and training with intention. Um, I love to flow just as much as the next person, but when it comes to actually learning the skills themselves, I don't know that flows are necessarily the best way to do it. I think it's a really amazing way to settle into a flow state, let those skills marinate and feel really comfortable with them um, in terms of just throwing around the bell and like having fun with it and um, almost dancing with it. But when it comes to actually learning the skills, I like to be robotic about it. I like to really be technical with every single movement involved. Um, so I like to teach single kettlebell skills and then pair them together for complexes. Now, I ran a poll on my Instagram today, and I was asking, how do you define complexes? Is it the number of skills paired together, or is it the purpose of them? I got a lot of votes for the purpose of them. I got quite a few votes for the number of skills, too. So there seems to be some confusion. Now, I have this debate with myself, like, every day. I will actually say I think it's both. I think when you are training for a purpose, if you have seven or eight skills paired one after the other, you might end up losing that powerful explosive movement by the seventh or eighth skill. So I think that um, the number of skills does play a part in how powerful and explosive you can be in those movements. And I think when it comes to the complexes, especially if you're only doing two or three skills paired together, you can bump up that weight and really work on the strength of them as well. So without further ado, let's get into the mobility and the warm up. I just want to see who's on. Hello, friends. Is anyone in from Kettle Club? Give me a little wave emoji if you are, and I'll come back in a second. All right. So we're going to start on the floor and tabletop. We're going to do a quick little mobility. We're going to get warm, and then we'll get into our first complex of the day. Tabletop position, hands underneath shoulders, knees under hips. We're going to go cat, cow, tucking the pelvis for cat, pressing away from the floor, and then arching the back, arching the pelvis up, squeezing your shoulder blades down for cow. Two more times. Awesome. We're going to now bring our right foot around to the outside of our hand, and we're going to sit upright. We're then going to come back down to the floor and switch to the other side. As I'm sitting upright, I'm driving my hip forward. As I'm coming back down to the floor, I'm pushing my hip back. 
So I'm starting to get into my hamstring and adductor a little bit when I'm coming down to the floor by pressing my hips back. I'm getting into the TFL and quad. As I sit up right, tucking my pelvis under and driving forward, we're feeling tightness there. One more on the left. And very good. We're gonna hop up and our arms are gonna go out in front of us, squeezing our shoulder blades down and back. Now we're gonna reach far forward, shrug up high, squeeze back and squeeze down. I'm keeping my arms locked out. And it's just shoulder blade movement. Because so I'm going through these four quadrants. Forward, up, back, down. One more time, forward, up, back, down. Now we're gonna bring our arms like this. And I want your hips to stay square to the front of the room. And we're gonna rotate back for your right shoulder to be over your right hip, but my right hip is going to be twisting forward against that rotation back. So I'm gonna start feeling tightness in the oblique and the QL. Extend this arm behind you, and I want you to do little lassos, squeezing your shoulder blade down with every little rotation. Go the opposite direction, continuing to drive that right hip forward against the rotation back, and come back to the front reset, and we'll go the other way. If you're just logging on, hello, welcome. We're gonna be doing two kettlebell complexes today. I was just talking about kind of the purpose of complexes, um, and especially as it pertains to flows. My program is very much flow-based, um, at least that's how it seems from the outside looking in. But if you were to look at a single day of our program, we don't have flows every day. We have one flow day a week. It's really just kind of a celebration of everything that we learned that week and a way to have fun with all those skills that we now have in our toolbox. Okay, so it is time to learn the first complex. So let's go ahead and grab the kettlebell. I'm going to go over the moves that are involved and then we will get into it. The first one is going to be very much upper body focused. It's going to be a tactical clean, a strict press, and a windmill. So we are addressing quite a few things in that. The tactical clean has the hand switch. If you don't know that movement yet, you're about to learn it and it's really fun. And it's something that you can throw around some really heavy weight too. The strict press is an overhead press. If your weight ends up being too heavy uh, for a strict press, we can end up doing it as a push press or even a push jerk. And then finally, the windmill is getting into other planes of motion. And that's something that I really like to sneak into my complexes because too often we are moving up and down, forward and back, but not necessarily left and right and rotationally. So there is a ton of rotation in my programming. I would say that's probably like the cornerstone of my programming is I love rotation. Now, when we're looking at rotation, it looks flow-like. What's interesting is rotation generates so much power if done with intention. So we're gonna talk about that today as we go through these complexes, little things that you can do to make your rotation more purposeful so that you can generate a lot of power with it. I'm seeing some text. I just wanna make sure I'm not missing any questions. Sorry for the long eight minute intro, but it's very important to understand why we're doing things. So I wanted to talk about that first. So let's learn our tactical clean. We're gonna be starting with our bell in the height position, just gonna be about a foot in front of you. Kind of depends on your arm length. Um, we want the bell to be just far enough in front so that we have some place to swing it back. So where you would set up your kettlebell for a swing. I'm gonna be starting with my left hand on the bell in the thumb corner. So opposite of the arm that is holding it, the opposite corner. I'm gonna be swinging back and then pulling up and catching with my other hand. Now, I'm not just with that, let's talk about how we did that. As I'm swinging back and then pulling up, I'm gonna sneak my other hand in in an underhand grip to catch in its thumb corner. So I'm swinging back, catch, pulling back, and hiking back to the floor. 
Now, the component of this that is probably the most important is the swinging back. Um, so let's talk about where the arm is supposed to be going. I am trying to glue my arm to my torso as much as possible to make the bell become a part of me. I don't want any separation between my arm and the bell. So the lift off from the floor is essentially just my knees being like um, hydraulics on a car, kind of lifting me up, chest is staying proud, and I'm looking forward as I'm swinging the bell back. So go ahead and practice that for a few on each side. And once you feel comfortable with it, you can start to pull the bell up and catch with the other hand in the front rack position. You'll then swing back, park it, and repeat on the other side. How do we feel about that? YouTube, Instagram, feel pretty good with it. I got some people tuning in from Georgia on YouTube. I love that. All right, so that is our tactical clean. That's really the uh, most important one for this one. Um, the windmill is obviously very important as well, but we're gonna go over that one pretty extensively in a second. Um, but let's go over where the tactical clean is gonna go to in this complex. So we've just cleaned the bell up to the front rack position. I'm holding the bell with my right hand. I'm gonna be doing a strict press, pressing up and back. Palm is gonna end up rotating forward and I'm squeezing my shoulder blade down in the holding side. So when I'm overhead, I'm depressing the shoulder blade to get the lat involved, especially if this is a heavier bell. You're really gonna notice if you are doing that or not. Okay, from here we'll be end up, we'll have our windmill. Um, but for now, just practice your tactical clean to your strict press and see if you have the right weight to make sense of that for you. I'm using a 12, mostly so I can breathe and instruct. Um, I think a 16 would probably be what I would work with for what we're gonna be doing today. Um, but again, I'm instructing, so I gotta be able to catch my breath. Okay, so the final skill to learn in this complex is the windmill. We're gonna start from a half kneeling position just to get kind of the chest and arm component down before adding the feet to it. Come down to a half kneeling position your left knee on the floor, right foot out in front. And I'm gonna have the bell in my right hand. I'm gonna press the bell overhead. I'm gonna spin the bottom leg out so that my feet are on the same plane. And if you were to look at me from an aerial perspective, it's gonna look like a tripod. And back foot is flexed, so toes are in the floor. Squeezing the shoulder blade down, I'm gonna look up and over at the bell, push it back into that hip, and keep my palm facing forward as I come down to the floor. The reason the hip goes back is because the chest is going forward and the bell is right in between the two. If I didn't sit back, I would fall. <laughs> and we don't wanna do that, especially if the weight is heavy. So really sit back with that hip, open in the chest and come down to a hand. Okay, that is our half kneeling windmill. If you wanna practice that on the side, other side, feel free. I'm gonna go ahead and show you all the standing version since this is just kind of a snapshot of what a lesson with me would be like. But we're gonna start again in the front rack position, pressing the bell overhead, spinning both feet away, about 45 degrees, looking up and over at the right palm, holding the kettlebell. My back leg is going to stay locked out. But I'm gonna push back in that hip and I'm gonna find some room by bending the forward knee and coming down until I anchor my elbow onto the inside of the knee and then coming up. All right. So that is going to be my windmill. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and run through that on both sides and then we'll get into our next complex. So we're going to have the bell in the hike position we're gonna have our tactical clean, strict press and windmill, and we will continue going back and forth um, until I tell you to stop. We're gonna be starting with three rounds per set. So hike position, swing back, tactical clean, strict press, spinning the feet away from us, looking up and over and doing our windmill. 
spinning the feet forward again, pull down to the front rack position, and come back down to the floor. From here, we will do our tactical clean to the other side, strict press, spin the feet away, look up and over, and we have our wood bell. Unspin the feet, pull down, back to the floor. Let's do it again, round two, tactical clean. Strict press, spin the feet away. Now what you'll notice is it's gonna kind of start feeling flow-like as you get used to it. That's good. As long as you're still moving explosively, keeping this bell close to your body as you come up. The strict press should feel challenging. Spinning the feet away, going nice and slow in the windmill. This one is not supposed to be done for speed. And we got one more right here. Tactical clean, strict press, windmill. To the floor. Last one. Tactical clean, strict press, windmill. And rest. Cool. How do we feel with that? So the purpose with all of this, right? is to work on some hand switches, to work on the strength of our overhead press and the stability of our shoulder, as well as our thoracic rotation in the windmill. So it is a good way to kind of address a lot of different things and to challenge yourself with the weight of all of them by making the complex short enough so that you're not exhausted when you get to the end of it, right? Now you're gonna notice if I went four or five rounds, my windmill might have started to get a little shaky. My strict press, I might have been going here. And that's fine, but you just have to establish, you know, what is your purpose for it? As long as you can establish that with yourself, you don't really need to explain it to anyone else. <laughs> All right, so let's go on to the next complex. Then we're gonna do both of them one more time as a little, little workout, kind of like a little flow. So the other complex is definitely more flow-like. It is going to be an iron cross to an outside pendulum, catching that outside pendulum in an outside clean, and then doing a bent press. The bent press is my favorite beyond anything else. I don't know how everyone else feels about the bent press. I actually wanna go over that first, just because we were just doing our windmill, and there are a lot of similarities in that we are getting the bell overhead by way of kind of rotating and pressing underneath it, uh, but it is, it ends up being very different from the windmill in, the, in a few different ways. So let's do a clean to bring the bell up to the front rack position. I'm going to be facing this way so that you can see what I'm doing as I'm going underneath the bell. So you can use a swing back and clean up to bring the bell up to the front rack position. My feet are shoulder width apart facing straight forward. I'm so sorry, I'm filming right now. Y'all give me one second. I think y'all are supposed to be here from three to five. I got it. Um, sorry guys. <laughs> um, so I've got my feet shoulder width apart. We're gonna rotate back and my palm is gonna be open with my tricep and lat touching each other. I'm slightly bent forward, but I'm not really intentionally bending forward. It's just that this bell is heavy and I've got my shoulder open. And so I'm gonna be slightly leaned forward. Now from here, I am gonna keep this leg locked out and the front knee is going to bend, just like we were doing with the windmill. I'm gonna be opening up in the elbow and I'm gonna be staring at this kettlebell, making sure that my hand and elbow stay stacked over each other as I'm bending underneath it. I'm gonna keep going upside down until my arm is totally locked out. I'm then going to stand up and kind of rotate around my arm and pull back down. I'm gonna give you guys a front view now so that you can see where my body is going within my legs, okay? So I'm gonna rotate back. I'm going to bend this left knee as the right leg stays locked out. I'm opening in the elbow and I'm going until I'm anchored on the inside of my leg and my arm overhead is locked out. And then I'm standing up. How do you feel about that? Drop questions if you have them. I know the bed press is difficult. 
Um, it's going to take some time to marinate for it to make sense, especially if this is your first time doing it. And if you've been doing it for a while, I want you all to know it's really more about leveraging yourself underneath it versus pressing it. So the thing that really was a breakthrough for me was realizing I have the mobility to truly go upside down underneath this bell. And I've got way more support of this weight if I keep my arm and lat touching the entire time. So I'm opening in my elbow and I'm truly not letting it leave my side by going upside down. And then I fully lock out and this is the hard part, is that stand up, all right? So hopefully that kind of clears up any uh, questions you might have about it. Um, all right, so I wanna show you guys now how that's going to pertain to this complex. So the other movements are swing-like and rotational, which I love. Um, the first one is the iron cross. Now the iron cross is starting with your hand overhead and kind of fighting against gravity to keep the, the bell on the back side of your wrist before swinging out of it. So yes, this complex has four movements, but two or three of them are kind of all, all together. There's really no other way to do them. So the iron cross, for now, I'm gonna swing into a pendulum swing and then just let it kind of die, um, but we'll let it, we'll let it kind of build from there. All right, so we're gonna have the press overhead. Palm is gonna be facing forward to start, and then I'm gonna turn the palm away from me and squeeze my shoulder blade down. Both of those things are very important. We want the bell on the back side of the wrist, and we want our lat supporting this weight as it comes down to my side. I'm gonna be resisting as long as possible, using this oblique big time and letting it swing out. All right, so that is the iron cross into some sort of pendulum swing. I didn't really commit to that one because I really wanna just stay focused on this iron cross. So squeezing the shoulder blade down, arm is locked out, resisting, letting it swing out. All right, now I end up doing what we're going to do coming out of it, which is that lateral swing with rotation, the pendulum swing, and then using rotation to pull it into our side into a clean. I'm gonna show you guys that pendulum swing and the outside clean facing this way so that you can see how tight I'm getting my elbow to my body as I'm pulling it in and punching into that um, front rack position. So, bell is in the front rack, pressing up, turning the palm away, Squeezing the shoulder blade down, I am resisting. Pendulum swing into the outside clean. I have done some pretty extensive tutorials on pendulum swings. If you want a um, further in-depth study on the pendulum swing, check out my page and my YouTube. I'm quite a nerd about that and levers and like kind of the physics behind all of this. So if you want to study that further, that's a good resource. But for now, really the biggest thing is chest goes over the top of the bell and the knees stay back so that they don't get whacked. Okay, now coming into your side, I'm gonna be rotating and rowing back. And when I'm rowing back, that's gonna give me the opportunity to have the bell float so that I can then punch underneath it and it rotates around my wrist. Okay, I know these are a little bit more advanced, but when I'm streaming, streaming from the Kettlebell Kings page, I kind of end up assuming that some of you guys have some kettlebell experience with some of these skills. So I really go for it. So I want you guys to try this complex with me. If it ends up being too hard, you can do just components of it. You could just do the bent press. You could just do um, the outside clean to the bent press, whatever you want to do. Um, but I just want to show you guys the full thing and then I'll give you Kind of a watered down version. I'll face you guys for this one. Okay, so from the front rack position, pressing up, this is gonna be the only press that we have because we're gonna end up having the bed press, which will do it for us. Palm is gonna be away. I'm gonna resist, pendulum swing, outside clean. That outside clean almost sets me up perfectly for my bed press. I'm gonna rotate back a little bit further and open my shoulder and I'm going to bend underneath the weight. I'll stand up. I'm going to have another one. I'm going to face this way. 
palm goes away, iron cross, pendulum, outside clean. Open up more, bend underneath. Good, from here, pull down to the floor, and we'll do it on the other side. So you can do a clean and strict press, or you can do a dead snatch. I'm gonna do the clean and strict press. Pressing overhead, palm is away, iron cross resisting the weight, pendulum, outside clean, rotate back further, bend underneath the weight. I'm gonna do the next one facing y'all. Iron cross, pendulum, outside clean, open up, bent press. All right, so we've gone over two complexes. We're gonna do both of them one more time. Again, uh, I'm sorry for the little um, point where someone walked up to me. My, my heat is kind of having trouble inside and so they showed up four hours before they were supposed to. Um, so I kicked them out. They'll come back later. Um, all right, so we're gonna go back to the tactical clean strict press and windmill. We're going to do both of those or all of those twice per side and then we're going to go back to the iron cross pendulum clean and bent press and do it twice per side and we'll call it a day all right so you remember the tactical clean was starting in the hike position so about a foot in front of us we're going to go left hand on the bell to start so we're pulling up to the right front rack and when we're catching that bell it's going to be an underhand grip that's catching to then go into strict press and windmill. All right, let's do it y'all. Three, two, one, tactical clean. Strict press, spin the feet away, look up and over, front knee bends. And we stand back up. Pull down to the front rack, swing back, park in the front. And other side, tactical clean, strict press, spin the feet away, windmill. Pull down, swing back, park in the front. Other side, again, final one, tactical clean to strict press, spin the feet away, look up and over, bending underneath the weight. Swing back, park in the front. One more time. Tactical clean. Strict press, spin the feet away. Look up and over. So you're staring at that bell anytime it's overhead. And rest. All right, now we're gonna go to the iron cross pendulum outside clean and bent press again. And we're gonna do that two times per side, all right? I'm just reading some comments on YouTube. Thank you for saying that you like how I teach. You know, I feel like I'm not with it today because I'm getting over a cold. So my brain is just foggy. So thank you. I feel like I'm usually much better than this, but hopefully some of this is translating. <laughs> All right, so let's go back to the Iron Cross. And remember that one is starting overhead. For our purposes, we're gonna do a, a clean and strict press or a dead clean. To get it overhead, you could use a bent press if you wanted to, if you're using a super heavy bell. But honestly, with that iron cross, if that's your first time doing it, I would say use a medium weight bell until you feel really comfortable with locking that shoulder blade down. Now, once you do, once you master that, this is an incredible exercise for the lap. Um, with kettlebells, we don't really have the opportunity to do like pull downs, right? Because we only have gravity really serving us with most of this. So resisting gravity is our best way to channel that. Um, so the iron cross ends up being a really cool way to target the lats. I digress. Let's go ahead and clean the bell up. We'll do our strict press. I'm going to face this way so y'all can see my bent press in the end. Okay, clean, press, and we're ready to go. Squeeze that shoulder blade down, turn the palm away. Resist as long as you can. Pendulum, outside clean. Open up more, bent press. 
maintain contact between the tricep and lat. We're already overhead, so we're ready for another one. Iron cross, pendulum, outside clean. Open up, bed press. And pull down to the floor, and we'll do the other side. And of course, you can change the number of reps based on the weight that you're using and your strength and your endurance. The biggest thing is I want you to stay moving powerfully and explosively and also be technically accurate with all of your positions. The second that starts to go, that's when it's time to take a rest. All right, those are our two complexes. Hopefully you guys feel like you learned a lot. I'm going to be posting both of these as like their own little post on my page this afternoon. So check back for that. This live will be posted as well. But if you want just kind of like a snapshot view of these two complexes, that'll be posted in addition to this. So that is that. Thank you so much for joining me. Again, sorry for the congestion, if you can hear it. It is, uh, it's been hot and cold here. So I know that messes with a lot of people's sinuses, but I appreciate you all. Thank you so much for tuning in with me. And I will be on probably in another month with Kettlebell King. So we'll see what I'm up to then. I'll see y'all later. Bye. Thank you so much, YouTube. Yes, total body day for sure. Oh my gosh. And it's like my first workout back after, after the cold. So thanks for sticking with me through all of that. I'm going to go get my heating and air guy from the front, and I'll just keep, keep this day rolling. Thank you again for joining me. I'll see you all next time.